I just received the Terra Onion mode, the multi-optical disc emulator for both the Sega Saturn and the Sega Dreamcast. 100% compatibility with the complete libraries for both of those consoles. You can load your games up with SD card, USB drive, or an SSD. There's a lot of options here. And in this video, what I wanna do is highlight my frustrations, my joys, my initial impressions and experiences with this device, and ultimately, am I happy that I purchased it? So we will be doing a quick install. Don't take this as a tutorial on installing this. Definitely refer to their manual that they have uploaded. But I will point out a few key things that I think are important during installation, but we will be fast forwarding through most of that. Now, here's the Terra Onion mode in all its glory. Has a lot of little configuration options there depending on your system that you're using. Very nice piece of hardware there. Don't worry about the serial number. I'm not concerned, it's already registered. But in order to get this installed into a Saturn, the process took me uh, about 20 minutes to get everything done. I've taken apart Sega Saturns plenty of times in the past, but there's five Phillips head screws on the bottom of the console that do need to be removed. I've already taken them out, simply slide off the top half of the shell once you have those out. And you will have to disconnect your ribbon cable from the drive that's already in there, from your disc drive. Uh, this ribbon cable here actually caused quite a few problems and we'll get into that in a moment. Now, before you go ripping out the optical drive, make sure you check that screw that's directly underneath as it will be grounded to the case here. Now, we do have a bunch of screws we gotta remove. First up, the power supply unit. There's one screw in the front and then two on the back outside of the case. Set these screws aside as they are unique to the power supply unit and you don't wanna use something else by accident. There is a clip on the left there. If you can't get the power supply unit out, just press on it. Now, the reason we're getting this all out is because we have to get this metal plate out to remove those black plastic posts as they will be in the way of the mode there. Now, you do have to unattach the ribbon cable from the controller port up front. Make sure you do that. This is a prime time to clean this thing up. Make sure there are no dust bunnies in there. Get those posts unscrewed and then start getting everything reattached. Now, once you put the board, like I removed everything so I could clean it up, but once you get everything back in there, make sure you're not pinching any cables, the ribbon cables or wires or anything, and just start screwing everything back together. The one other thing I wanna point out is there, the two screws that are up top on the left and right side of the cartridge slot, those screws are a little bit longer than any of the other screws in here. So make sure you're using those ones as if you use a, the wrong one, they will not thread. So keep that in mind. Now it's time to get the mode installed. Now that we have everything in place and we're ready to test, I wanna point a few things out real quick. So I did have to use the two pin connection here for power to the device. Now, if you have to use that, refer to the manual on how to connect it for your specific system. But I did have to use tweezers to push those wires down into that connection. Now this ribbon cable here, I do have it taped down just to keep it out of the way for the moment because it is a very long ribbon cable. And that did cause some issues with the mode, and I'll talk about that more in a moment here. But there's a few things I wanna point out. So these little posts, you may have already noticed, I don't have them in the correct spot for the top. Now I've orientated this every which way I can, and no matter how I put this thing in here, if I have those posts unmodified, put in there on the top, it gets in the way of that cartridge slot. So if you're gonna use a RAM cart, backup cart, whatever the case may be, it will push on it and push up the mode and it will not make a full on connection. It may cause it to not work. So you may have to trim a piece of that off or move it. I moved them down, which would get in the way if I used the hard drive instead. But since I'm not using a hard drive at the moment, that's, that's just what I had to do. But you may need to trim these. Just wanted to point that out. No matter how I put it in there, they were in the way. A cartridge would not make a full connection and it would prop up the mode a little bit. Now, once I got everything ready to go, I tried out a few different USB drives and not a single one that I tried, no matter how I formatted it, would be recognized as a storage device on this unit. Now, I am using an SD card. I've used a few as well. None of them would work, same story, but this one right here, the SanDisk 256 gigabyte works just fine. So I wanted to point that out. Now, once I got this all going and tested out, I ran into some issues. Now, before you say anything, these issues have been 100% resolved, but there was a lot of frustration involved and it had to do with that ribbon cable because once I got the Sega Saturn set up, the mode 
99% of the time would not boot up. So removed it, tried it on the Dreamcast, and it worked 100% every time. But on the Saturn, it would not boot up. The reason was is because of that ribbon cable. The, the Saturn that I have here, I guess, is just a little bit of a different variant with the optical disk drive that it uses and the ribbon cable that it uses. And the original firmware for the mode uh, couldn't work with that properly. There were some timing issues and whatnot. That has been resolved. Just wanted to point that out. But it kind of sucked at the moment and it was very frustrating. But the team of people who were helping me out with this, asking tons of questions, getting tons of pictures and video from me, troubleshooted it, narrowed it down, figured it out, and got it fixed. So now my mode on the Sega Saturn is 100%. So let's go ahead and get this case back on and I'm gonna show you the UI and showing it running. Now, after all of that, the Saturn's back together, the mode is installed, everything is working for me perfectly, 100%, having no issues at all. So I have 100 games currently on here. I am using that 256 gigabyte micro SD card from SanDisk. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. Initially, I was going to use a hard drive. I bought one for it, but I wound up needing it for something else. And I figured in the meantime, I'll use this. But currently with these 100 games, I'm using less than 50 gigabytes and I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't want to have the complete collection on here. I just want to have a curated list. So I still have plenty of room to add games to it. So that is fine by me. So just looking at this, this is the way it works. If you scroll down, this is my list of games. If you scroll all the way down, it does round robin. So if you hit the bottom, it goes right back to the top, top, you know, press up, goes back to the bottom. So that is very nice there. Now, if you do use multiple storage devices, check the manual for the limitations there. But say you use an SD card and a USB drive that works, you could hit the Z button to swap devices. I don't have another device on here at the moment, so it's not happening, but that's the way you would do it. And it says on the bottom right what device you're using. So it says card because I'm using an SD card. Now, if we hit the C button, we will go into our options. We have a few options here, nothing crazy, just what we need essentially. Game list mode, right now we're on list, but there is covers that you could use. Currently the database is being worked on. We don't have access to that at the moment, but that will have all the metadata and the you know cover art for all the games, which will be nice. I mean, that does look pretty cool from what I've seen so far. You can auto region patch, so you could play whatever region you want without having to region mod your Saturn. So that is cool. Disable lid switch, yes or no. Starting video mode, NTSC or PAL. So you have a few options there. Reset uh, behavior, boot to menu or normal reset. Reset output signal disabled or pulse on BTM. Then a few other options. Boot the BIOS menu, take straight back to BIOS menu. Check update, depending on how you have this set up and how it updates. If it didn't auto update, you would check update to grab that update on your storage device to update it. Uh, and then version, you could check what your serial number is and what current version of the firmware you're on. So just gives you a little idea there. Very simple. Now on the Dreamcast side of things, it's very similar, but has Dreamcast specific options. We will do another video checking out the Dreamcast later on. I just wanted to focus on Saturn at this time. So let's go ahead and boot up a game. Once you hit A on a game on your list, the system just auto boots into that game. So all the normal stuff will happen, any loading that needs to take place and whatnot. So there's nothing additional, just auto loads the game as if you had the original disc in there. So that's very nice. I'm not seeing any issues with booting games. I've tested a bunch. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, I've tested close to 40, a little under 40 games total on this list that I have. Um, and I haven't had any issues with sound or games glitching out or anything like that. Everything just works. So I am very happy with that for sure. You know, for paying $200 for this device, I know some people will look at it as a pretty high amount, uh, but for what you're getting and the capabilities of this device and it being dual purpose, Dreamcast and Saturn, I, I really think the money was worth it for me. I did have some initial frustrations where, yeah, I wasn't sure. Was my mode defective? Was there something wrong with my Saturn, even though I tested it on two Saturns? No, it just so happened that there was just some weird variant of a Saturn that I had 
that it just didn't work but they immediately fixed it when the issue was brought up so i'm very happy with the response on that uh, that initial frustration sure those few hours of diagnosing things and whatnot was you know it was time consuming and frustrating but in the end it resulted in an issue being found and fixed so nobody else has to deal with that so i'm happy it happened to me i mean it sucks that it happened to me but hey at least it was found early and nobody else has to deal with that so i thought that was uh that was pretty cool that it was resolved fairly quickly and you know i've used the raya in the past and i i i couldn't get all my games to work i'm using the same exact games that i was using on my raya and on my raya i was just having issues non-stop some games i wouldn't get sound some games wouldn't boot and i've tested those specific games on here and i haven't had any issues so I'm very happy with the performance of this, the quality of it, you know, having everything working just, you know, almost right out of the box for me. But just getting those games just thrown on the storage device in a folder named Saturn and just boom, everything booting up. I'm very happy. You know, there's a lot of pricey games for the Saturn. I do have a small Saturn collection of discs and I've been like not really compelled to buy any more games because the games just keep going up in price and you know it's just a crazy thing so i'm i'm happy to have a device like this i love having these optical drive emulators available for all these different systems and for this one to be widely available plenty of people are going to be able to enjoy this so that's definitely a nice thing so ultimately yeah i am happy that i bought this uh you know the weight was was definitely excruciating you know you always order something and want it right away uh, but hey once it got shipped it arrived to me fairly quickly they used dhl uh, very smooth process was very happy with the way it went down so really cool if you're interested i'll put a link in the description for this device if there's anything else you want me to test let me know i'll do some follow-up on that uh but do look out for my next video on this device. Should be testing it on the Dreamcast. But from what I've tested so far, I had no issues at all on Dreamcast. So whichever way you want to go, uh, using this on the Dreamcast or the Saturn or maybe swapping it around occasionally, I don't know. I'm not going to do that. But it's definitely a device I could highly recommend for either system that you want to use it for. So hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out. And with that said... I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye and boom. Bye.